Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Squircle. Now, I have no idea what a Squircle is, but if you take a look at today's puzzle, you'll see it's a shape that's a fusion of circles and squares, which is how I came up with this thumbnail where Sleuth is visiting a, chate a chateau, as you do in the summers, and uh, overlooking the, I mean, you can't really call it backyard, the massive garden at the back of the chateau from uh, the balcony. And you can see just a bunch of square hedges with circularly trimmed trees in the middle. Um, now, today's puzzle, which is from full deck and missing a few cards, I'm not entirely sure what this is all about. So I'm looking at the puzzle and I'm thinking either it's incredibly clever and I have no clue how to solve it, or this is very much about you know, using a ton of um, pencil marks and systematically going round and eliminating them round and round we go. If you're feeling confused, don't be. Let's take a look at today's puzzle and today's grid. So, Squircle from Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. Rule-wise, I mean, obviously, the Squircle here. There is actually a square in the middle, which we may need to visit, but this is a one-star difficulty-rated puzzle. So I'm hoping this particular square, uh, we will not need to look at it. Rules-wise, standard Sudoku rules apply. Place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, in every column, and in every 3x3 three three box. Then we have cages. Digits in cages cannot repeat and must sum to the value shown in the upper left corner of the cage. So, for example, if I've gone for a 2 in here, this cell would have to be an 8 to make sure that these two cells add up to 10. And you can see that that's the, cage, that's the total sum that's been given here for this cage. 9, 10, 13, etc. We have thermometers. Digits on thermos are strictly increasing from the bulb to the tip. So that's the bulb of this thermometer heading towards the tip of this thermometer. And we need to be increasing as we go from the bulb to the tip. So if that's a 2, this would have to be 3 or higher. I don't have to have kind of... Um, I don't have to have consistent steps. So there's a difference of 1, there's a difference of 2. I'm going to be adventurous in a difference of 3 here with an 8. What I cannot do is go back down here and go to a 7 that is clearly no longer strictly increasing from the bulb to the tip. So that's all the rules we have for today. Um, if you feel like visiting this chateau, I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, book your summer holiday now. Or instead, just join Sleuth by playing this particular puzzle. Link will be in the description down below for you to do so. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So one thing that's sort of striking me about this puzzle is the amount of, I don't want to call it symmetry, rotational symmetry may be more accurate. So you've got this thermometer that's going around the Fistemifel ring, which as I said, I hope we don't have to use. Then we have the squircle, or really square with, it's almost like an octagonal really shape. Um, round and again, a bit of rotational symmetry there. But it's really... It's not actually, sorry, I was going to say it's really just the corners where it breaks. These cages are clearly consistently different. And actually, the cages in here, whilst the tens are consistent, the thermometers are going through a set of cages that are not consistent. So in particular, the ten, I say the ten and then I'll point at the six and the ten are different. Right, let's start with box three. This is one, two, four, five. If you've got a cage of six, you have to have either one or two, one, five, or two, four. Pretty sure this is not one or two. If it's Even if it's a two, that would be one, that would be zero, so that's not going to happen. Okay, so let's start with this thermometer then. So this is two, three, four. This is one, two, three, not a four. I don't think that can be a two. If that's a two, that would be one. That would break this cell, so that's not a two. 1, 2, 3 would make this 7, 8, 9. Three, four. I think that's fine. Okay, and then we will go round. Uh, this can't be a 4 or a 5, because we've already placed them in box 3, or pencil marked them, so this is at least 6, and a maximum of 8, and this is 7, 8, 9, and we're back to 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. 
Now, just the these thermometers, actually, let me just think about them for a second. So if I try and place a high digit on these, six, seven, eight, nine, it doesn't work. So they're maximum of four, because you know, five in a two cell 10 cage doesn't work because the other one would have to be a five. So this has to be low. And if I try one, two, three, four, this has to be high. This is six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, is that useful? Not sure. Not sure at all. Okay. 10 cage hopefully is useful. So that's at least, again, same thing. If that's two, that would be one that would break this cell. So this is a minimum of three. And that could be nine, eight, seven. So this is three, four, five, six. This could be four, not a five. We've covered that already. Six or seven. If it's a four, that's a six. If it's a six, that's a four. And if it's a seven, it's a three. And in here, we can actually have a five. I can go four, five, and six even. No, I can't go six. Um, six in here would force this to be a five, would force this to be a four, excuse me. That would have to be a six where it would conflict. So that can't be a six. That can't be a four, therefore. So in answer to my question, yeah, this is a uh, this is a puzzle that's all about pencil marking a ton and systematically removing options. Not my strength, if I'm honest. Here is another digit I can remove. Look at column eight and ask the question, where are the ones and twos? Well, this is not one of them. These are clearly not any of them. And the 13 cage can't be the other, because even if that's a 2, that's an 11. So this is the second 1, 2, and I remove a 3, and I remove a 7. This is going to be very slow if I'm having to do this constantly. You can see that there is a lot of tension around these corners, consistently a lot of tension around these corners. But I just feel like I'm missing something. 13 cage. So this can't be 6 or 7. Not 6 or 7. 6 and 7. Because then what would happen if I do that in here? I would be left with 3s and 4s only. So not a 6, 7 pair. It can be 5, 8. It can be 4, 9. Which is more options than I would like, if I'm honest. 6, 4, 3... Six, what was it? Six four, then that would be five eight. That would be seven eight. That would be eight nine. Not seeing the problem there. Am I going to have to go round and round? I mean, this is a minimum of four, so that's sort of helpful because, again, any digit that is lower than that would make this. Very difficult digit to write in. So this is six, seven, eight, or nine. That's a high of eight. And because this is a minimum of four, that's a minimum of five. So this is five, six, seven. This means it's five, six, seven in here. And this is two, three, four, five, six. I don't know if I want to pencil mark even that. So this is either six, seven, or eight, nine. I mean, six, seven, eight, nine. We're starting to see a bit of a pattern in here, and I imagine we will see it go around there as well. So four, five, six, seven. That would make six, seven, eight, nine. That would be another. Ah, it's also six, seven, eight, because we've got a quintuple. In fact, one of these two cells is a three because we've got one, two, three, four, five all already placed. So this couldn't be a 5. This is a minimum of 6. And in fact, these have to be 6, 7, 8, 9. But because this is not a 6, one of these has to be a 6. That's not a 6. And therefore, that's not a 7. OK, getting interesting. Hmm. 
mean almost a quadruple, almost. It's just this five is stopping it from being one. What would happen if it is a five? That would become four. That would be six, that would be three, that would be seven, because that's a three, it's a four. This would be two, three, this would be two, three. No, hang on, because this is a three, this would be one, two. This would be two, this would be one, this would be nine, and that would break. Uh, it's got to be an easier way of showing this. So that would be four, that would be nine because of the 13 cage. That would be... Um, why did I remove the three again? I thought for some reason I removed the three. Yeah, that's eight. I appreciate this is starting to look a bit like bifurcation now. <laughs> um, three, six, four. Dear, oh dear. And then I have to have one, seven, and five. And one of these would be a five. The four and five would be eliminated. So five doesn't work, but that is, without bifurcation, you're not going to spot this. I want to use it, but at the same time, I'm not sure I should use it. How would you see this otherwise? I mean, it's, it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Is there another entry into the puzzle? Nine minutes, coming up to ten. This is a one-star difficulty-rated puzzle, and coming up to ten minutes and not a... I'm using it. Uh, you can uh, slaughter me in the comments later. That's not a six. That is not a four. These are now high digits. That's another high digit. That is not a seven. That is not a six. Um, this is a maximum of five, so this is actually fairly restricted. Six, seven would make eight. In fact, that can't be an eight. That would break this cell. Six, seven in here means this is not a six, seven pair. That's an eight, nine in the column. That gives me my first digit about time. Seven, six, three, four, five, eight. And uh, not eight. Uh, nine, four. Not four. Two, three, not a three, therefore not a seven. Then these two have to be one and something. One, two. If it's a two, it's a six, which it isn't. So that's one, that's seven, therefore that's six. If this is seven or nine, it's not a seven. Uh, it would have to be the nine. This would have to be the seven. This is a three, this is a four, five, one. One five, that's a two four. Doesn't tell me anything about the six seven eight. Oh, that one does though, that's a two. This is now not two six or one seven, that's three five. Uh, that nine, if I paid attention, would have given me the eight, the two, the three, and therefore not six four three. This is not four. In fact, in the column, where does five go? Can only be this cell. That's five, that's eight. That's six, removes a six from here. So this is another seven, eight, nine. It's not a seven, it's an eight, nine. That is the seven. That one gave me a two and an eight. Uh, pay attention, sleuth, and a nine. Five, three, five, right. Uh, two and four surely resolved, yes, two and four. Okay, let's keep going. I need a three. Can't be in here. So that would be two, one. It's not a two. Well, it could be. Right, let's just pencil mark the lot for now. Uh, so I need one, two, three, eight, six. Three, six, eight. 
8 can't be there because that's not a 1. Therefore, this is 3, 6, and that 3 gave me 6. 3, not 3s, and that 8 gave me a 6 and an 8. Therefore, a 9. That's a bunch of options there. Not sure I want to explore it. I need a 1 in, in row 3, and uh, it's not these two cells. That's the only place for a 1. The rest of this is going to, I'm going to say it's 2, 3, 4. Not a 3, not a 4, not a 3 either. That's the only place for a 3. That's a 2, that's a 4. That's a 2. In here I need 5 and 8. Kind of a little bit frustrated about this break-in. There, there has to be something that I've missed. 1, 7, 8. Not a 7. Not an 8. Uh, 1 is not here. And it's not halfway up with thermometer, that's a 1, that's a 7, that's an 8, that's a 6. Therefore, that's a 9 again. Sorry, taking a bit of a moment here. That's not 5 or 6, it can only be a 7. 3, not in any of these cells. 1 and 2, 2 is not here. Could be there. Not here, so it is there, and that is 1. And 9, oh, actually, we just know that this is 1, this is 9. These two cells are 1, which can only be here, and 4. Still not resolved the 5, 8, so that's fine. This is 7 and 5. In here, we've done 1, 2, 3. These are 4 and 5, 4 and, I mean, 4 is the lower one anyway, and 6. Therefore, that's a 3 to complete the 9 cage. 1, 2, 3, 4. I need 5, 7, and 9. Not 7. In here, what do I need? I need a 1, which can only be there. I need a 9, which can only be here. And a 5, I believe. That gives me 9 there. 5, 7, not resolved. These cells, I need 2, 6, and 8. That 6 and 8 gives me a 2, and then a 6, 8 pair here. I need another 5, 7, and a 1. That's 1, that's the 5, that's the 7, that's the 5, that's the 8, that's the 5. And the 2 is not here, there. This cell is known 7. I need a 6 and a 9. That's the 9, that's the 6, that's the 8. 8, 6, 4, and if I've not made any mistakes, 8 for the finish. That's incredible. Maybe I should have persisted a bit longer. Because once you eliminated this as a 5, which I did so around the 10 minute mark, the, the rest of the puzzle only took 5 minutes. So kind of wondering if I used that a bit too early and if I just continued down this path for just a little bit longer I'd have been able to eliminate it without what I would consider probably bifurcation I mean to be fair I was very deliberately trying to remove the five so I can actually use the quadruple of the high digits so it's not without cause and then it collapsed reasonably quickly I'm sure you'll give me feedback and if there's a better route than what I've just uncovered here you'll also let me know I hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle maybe the video and uh, see you back for the next video bye bye for now